Welcome to our EG Essentials lesson on simple and full fashion bind offs. This video teaches you how to bind off a mock rib hem that is using a latch tool. The tool was made by inserting a standard Gerhardt needle into a soft plastic handle. In this case, the handle came from a toothbrush. Though a traditional flatbed knitting machine tool will work, the longer reach of this homemade tool allows for a less obstructive view for filming. This sock is made from a cotton wool lycra blend yarn called Cicada Stretch. It's really durable and it's great for summer socks. The stretchy inside area, right along there along the top edge, is the full fashion bind off that is our goal. This is a simple bind off of a mock rib hem. One hand holds the tool, the other controls the yarn. But it also needs to use a thumb or a finger to lean out the needle to give the tool clear access to the stitch. In this case, we're doing consistently a purl stitch. Your latch tool is working like a ribber needle from the inside of the cylinder going into the inside of each stitch. Now, to prepare to do a bind off, you're gonna need some garment, a sock, a gauntlet, a mitten, that has a mock rib hem that you need to finish off. All the needles need to be up and out of work. The yarn needs to be taken out of the yarn carrier and put into the take-up spring up above. This helps control the yarn while you're doing your bind off. If you do not have an easy feed yarn carrier, you're gonna to need to pull 48 inches out and then clip it. Pull it through and then re-thread it through the top yarn mast, but be sure to remember to put it in the take-up. Now in this instant replay, we wanna show you that you go into the very first stitch on a needle that the yarn is attached to and it should be freely moving loop just like it shows here a freely moving loop and all you're going to be doing is a chain stitch of loops going from one stitch to the next stitch you lean the needle out you slip the latch hook in past the latch itself you place the yarn in the hook as you pull out the latch tool so that you can pull a loop through the stitch that stays on the needle. Again, the stitches are staying on the needle. You don't take any stitches off. So you pull it through and then you pull it through the loop you made in the very first needle you started, the stitching process. Again, this is a freely moving loop connected to your free yarn. You lean the needle out, you go in on the far side of the needle. You pull it through and then pull it through the loop you made from the previous stitch. Now the essential part of this is to understand how important it is to go to the far side of the next needle. Again. Just go into the stitch, pull it through to the far side of the next needle. This is what gives your bind off stretch and ease and consistency. If you don't go to the farthest side of the next needle, you won't have that kind of evenness. Now watch, this is just a chain stitch that you can unravel back to where you first started. And because you leave the stitches on the needles, they don't fall off. This time I will do a full fashion bind off by adding a chain in between the stitches, going under the bar to make a loop, then going into the farther side of the next stitch. Now to understand the difference between a simple bind off and this full fashioned bind off, view these pictures of using the same type of sock yarn and the kind of results you get with the different applications of binding off. Here in this lavender one, you see the simple bind off. Where you can see the large loops going around that don't lay very much into the yarn. And this, this is a full fashioned bind off that lays nicely. And another ex part of this is that it gives more flexibility. It has more stretch. So it not only looks better when you're finished, 
for the added little extra stitch in there, might add maybe another minute or two to the whole process of binding off, you get much better results. So again, in doing the full fashion bind off, you go into the stitch, then you go under the bar between the needles, then you go into the stitch on the farther side of the needle, and look, there, if you drop it, don't worry about it, just pick it up. Go back, pick up your loop, and continue on. This is really a no-fuss way of doing something. There's not going to be any knitting falling to the floor. If you make a mistake, you can unravel it, you can pick up your stitch, and just go on. And this is in real time. You get your rhythm going, and you can honestly get around an entire sock machine in a very short amount of time. Now, when you get to the point where you're right in front of yourself, uh, almost to the very center, uh, you'll have a point where you need to switch over either to your left hand or you need to shift your position around to the left so that you can do those stitches that are off over to the area from center to the right half mark there, that yellow mark there that d divides the cylinder in half front to back. These stitches are the hardest ones to get to, but again, all you need to do is either switch hands or go around and switch your position. And once you get back around, you can go back and switch back to your right hand dominant. And honestly, it would be the reverse of this if you were left-handed. Now, what direction you go in probably has to do, in this case, with your right-handed or left-handedness. If you are left-handed, it probably would be easier for you to go around the other direction. Now we're going to close and finish by going into the first stitch to be nearly our last stitch. We repeat going in to that very first stitch. It's a little tight, so it can be difficult. Then pull through on the bar in between, and then overlock it. And there's your end, and you're done. Let's do an instant replay of that. On the very last stitch that you go into, that will be the first stitch you started with. You go back into it, go under, pick up the yarn, and pull the loop through. Sometimes it's harder to clear the latch on that one, so be sure you get it all the way through. Now go under the bar in between or into the stitch. You just have to find a place to go into. Pull it through, then go back in over it and lock it by pulling another loop through. Sort of a slip. And that's it. To take your newly bound off mock rib hem off, you need to close your latches and run around. Make sure those latches are closed or they'll get caught up in your in your hem and it'll take an awful lot of time to get it untangled. So now we need to work that little tail back in. So you can take your latch, come in and get as close to that end as you can possibly get, pull it into the inside of the hem, and you're done. Look at that, a beautiful sock. I've shown you the pearl inside bind off, both the simple and the full fashioned. Now this is for a mock rib hem, but what do you do when you have a cuff that's ripped? Well, you combine knit and pearl bind offs, and we'll do that in another lesson. So come back.